Why do they never go in for me? Hey music lovers, yes, I'm back again. And back again with something I slightly different. I thought I'd talk about uh, another format. Now I've talked about CDs on this channel, I've talked about tapes, um, but I've never talked about these things and they are VHS videos, look at these, yes. Um, as you all know, I moved fairly recently and during that move, well, after that move, I dug out my old VHS player, which still works, and a load of old VHS tapes. Now, most of my VHS tapes um, I got rid of, the movies I got rid of, because a lot of them I had on DVD, got them on DVD again. Um, but I kept the music videos because a lot of these, some of these, no, a lot of them, you cannot actually get on DVD. Um, so it made sense for me to keep them and to keep a VHS player in case I wanted to ever watch them again. And I've been watching them again now that I've got it set up. Um, so I thought I'd go through some of my VHS tapes. I've only got, I've got a limited amount of these things. Um, so I might do a couple of videos on it, but I might also go on and talk about some of the DVDs I've got, which is something slightly different from, from showing records. Um, apologies to all you vinyl purists, but it's my channel, I'll do what I want with it. So, first off, we've got one of my favourite bands when I was sort of, what, how old was I? 16, 17, 18, maybe? One of my absolute favourite bands. I haven't shown their records, I've got all their albums, but I've never shown any of them. Um, that band is The Doors. Now, I absolutely went potty for the doors. I bought books, um, the Danny Sugarman book, I've got big coffee table books. Um, I really wanted to be Jim Morrison for quite a while. I was absolutely infatuated with the doors and the way he looked. Um, I thought he was the absolute ultimate rock front man. I thought he was absolutely outstanding. Um, so I've got three videos by, by the doors. This one is Dance on Fire, which is a collection of um, TV appearances, early uh, like short films they made for some of their some of their songs, um, videos that were made after the fact. So you've got things like um, Break on Through, which is the original promo clip. So this was a video made in nineteen when was that nineteen sixty seven. So eight years before Bohemian Rhapsody uh, changed video forever, um, and it's a it's a pretty good clip. Um, you got things like performances from the Ed Sullivan Show on here, um, videos filmed at recording sessions, uh, new films directed by Ray Manzarek. Manzarek, I think I'm saying that right. I'm probably butchering it. Uh, um, you've got live films from 68, Danish TV performances, all kinds of stuff. Um, you've got a live performance of the end as well. So great, great stuff. And to actually be able to, to see the band performing, not just Morrison, but the rest of the band performing was brilliant because there was no chance I was ever going to see this on TV. Um, although they did play... Uh, music TV, music on TV in the 80s. We grew up in a... I grew up in a really good era where they, show, where they played lots of... They showed lots of music on TV. There were regularly live concerts on, which doesn't happen anymore. Um, all kinds of stuff. Um, In-studio live performances... Bands on late night TV. Of course, we had Top of the Pops. We had Whistle Test when it was good. Um, we had the work, not the word. We had Tube, all kinds of stuff. But to see older stuff, because it was quite rare to see this kind of stuff. So this was brilliant. Um, 
and I also got a couple of their live videos um, I'll do this one first so this is live at the Hollywood Bowl which I also have on a vinyl um, I, I think it's edited highlights on the vinyl this one it's it's this one's okay um, I'm trying to think that one's got Yeah, that one's that one. Um, yeah, it's this one focuses way more on um, Jim Morrison and what he was up to during the, the performance. We, it didn't really pay much heedance to the rest of the band, like Robbie Krieger, John Densmore, Ray, Ray Manzarek, um, which is a bit of a shame, really. Yeah. Morrison was the focal point and he was and rightly so really he was an, an ultimate showman um, but I think I, now that I'm older I really prefer this one which is The Doors in Europe this is more of a, a collection of performances on a European tour introduced by Grace Slick and Paul um, uh, Cantner Cantner? Yeah, Paul Cantner, both of Jess and Airplane. Um, so there's a, there's a long, not long, but a fairly long intro on this one. Um, oh, John Phillips. John Phillips did the intro on that one. Just remembered, John Phillips from the Mamas and the Puppers did that one. Or did he? I know I'm getting that mixed up, ignore that. I can't remember who did the intro on that one. Um, this one focuses way more on uh, the band. You get a lot more footage of, of the band playing. So there's a lot more emphasis on like Robbie Krieger's guitar. And this really showed me what a f I think he was a phenomenal guitarist, actually. He played, he could do the kind of the, the atmospheric, you know, long sustained notes. Um, didn't really use feedback, didn't use feedback, um, but very eerie sound to his guitar playing at times. Um, not really visually appealing, he kind of stayed at the back and played his guitar. But what really came through was Ray Manzarek's keyboard skills. They were absolutely unbelievable, and you really see it on here. The way he played, played two keyboards at the same time, one for the bass line, because the Doors didn't have a bass player. So Manzarek played the the um, the bass lines on a, I think it was a Fender, Fender keyboard, maybe? Not sure. And then at the same time, he was playing all the lead organ parts, and... To see him going absolutely freak out on, I forgot, was it the end? But at times it was like this maelstrom of keyboard and how he kept it together, how he kept the rhythm going, but freestyling. So playing the rhythm rock solidly, lock, lock step with John Densmore with, with his left hand and then playing these freaking out at the same time but not just like randomly, but melodically with his right hand. The guy was a bloody genius. Absolutely unbelievable playing. I can't get over it. So yeah, this is a bloody good watch. Um, if you if you can get hold of a copy of this. I think this is on DVD now. I think this one is. I think most of the door stuff is on DVD. Um, this is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, fantastic stuff. So it was brilliant to actually see them, to be able to get to see them. John Phillips did introduce this one, and it's Jimmy Plays Monterey. So this is um, a recording of Jimi Hendrix's set at the Monterey Pop Festival, which was um, curated and got going by the Mamas and the Papas, well, basically John Phillips, um, in 1967. Um, Filmed by D.A. Pennebaker, who did the Dylan film, Don't Look Back, is that right? I 
think I might have that wrong, but anyway. Um, but basically, whoever shot it, you didn't really need to do anything. You just had to set the cameras up and Jimmy went away. This is a phenomenal performance. Absolutely incredible. It, this, this set, I think this basically set his legend. Um, everything he's famous for, he did in this. So he plays a guitar with his teeth, he plays a guitar behind his back, behind his head, up here somewhere, just playing. Um, the fluidity of his guitar, it still astounds me. And to see him actually playing and still producing these sounds is just jaw-dropping, to be honest. Uh, set fire to his guitar, made love to it. The feedback was going absolutely all over the place. Um, there's stories about how um, The Who were on just before Hendrix went on. And uh, there were arguments about who was going to go on first because whoever went on second would have maybe have been blown away by whoever was first. But I don't think even the who possibly at their best topped jimmy on this i mean i think out of all the 60s guitarists jimmy is my favorite hendrix was just beyond everybody else i think but i would put pete townsend as as for his, the way he used feedback and i'd put him as second above like jeff beck above Clapton above um, all the other. I, I really rate Jim, uh, Pete Townsend as a guitarist. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. Uh, but Jimmy was head and shoulders above everybody for me. So, and he just looked the part. What a phenomenal, phenomenal musician he really was. So to get to, to, get to see him, when was this released? 80. 87 to get to see him on film was brilliant right so that's the 60s we then move on to the 80s um so i had most of these like when we were young when i was young mtv i think was something that you'd heard of as being in America, I don't think, I think probably about five people in the UK had seen it. So we never got, apart from the odd thing on Top of the Pops or maybe one of the music shows, we very rarely got to see videos. So it was great. I loved, I had to get this when I was younger because Queen were just one of the bands for me. Obviously, video pioneers. What strikes me for you in this back again, though, is... Apart from on Bohemian Rhapsody, which blew everybody away, rightly so, because it was just so completely different to anything that had gone before. Um, and the video for Save Me, which is absolutely beautiful. It uses, um, intersperses shots of the band playing on stage. Um, during a gig interspersed with uh, beautiful painted animated sequences um, and the way they combine the two with uh, a bird motif merging into Freddy and then merging out Freddy is absolutely breathtaking at times it's, it's lovely but most of these are not that visually pioneering there quite a lot of stuff um the ba basically they're all the band playing um well a lot of them are like we will rock you is basically them in a field we have the champions is them in the same field spread your wings is a live video bicycle race is there at the band playing with lots of naked girls on bikes um fat bottom girls is them playing probably the best videos are um well, one of the other best videos, which I think has been parodied loads, is is crazy little thing called Love, where Freddie's strutting up and down a, a kind of catwalk. Um, looking back, it's very, very, very camp. Um, 
very camp actually, but just a brilliant video. So, yeah, I think they, they, I think the video has improved after after Radio Gaga, and it's a hard life. I want to break free, um, and then on from there, the videos really improved. They put a lot more. Maybe they, the record company, put more money into it. I don't know, but um, yeah, still great, still great to see these videos. So that wraps up the first batch of VHS tapes. I thought I'd share with you. Um, had a great time watching these again. Uh, move on to, um, and I am going to do another video, but we move on to uh, artists from the video age. Uh, well, thanks very much for everybody for, for watching, and uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye.